Thanks for joining this how-to screencast brought to you by Salesforce Support. In this video, we'll explore how you can use and optimize Einstein recipes for an efficient communications workflow. Marketing cloud personalization lets users create tailored customer experiences. Using AI and real-time data to optimize conversions and recognize greater cost efficiency, you can realize greater impact at each customer touchpoint, provide recommendations, and make the most of investments into marketing campaigns. Here's how marketing cloud personalization works. A marketing cloud tool named Personalization enables the creation of a user account. Personalization collects data, let's call them events, from the website and per user level related to customer behavior and perceived interests. You can observe these events on a left-hand drop-down menu by clicking on the selection Event Stream. Event Stream shows every interaction that's been taken. Imagine the power of addressing visitors in a unified, consistent voice with recommendations across channels, no matter how they might interact with your organization. Here we'll show you how you can bring together key components of personalization for even greater impact using Einstein recipes. Think of Einstein recipes as adjustable recommendation-making algorithms within Marketing Cloud. You can access Einstein recipes from the platform. In the machine learning section of the navigation, select Einstein recipes. The recipe builder is easy to configure. It combines an understanding of user attributes, affinity, and overall catalog use within the system. This, in turn, lets you create a recipe that can be used as part of a comprehensive personalization campaign. To build your recipe, there are several concepts you should know. Recommendation type can be anything you have in your catalog. In this case, we have product and category. For this demo, we'll be creating a product recommendation. Ingredients include the recipe's core elements. Ingredients will define the parameters for considering items in your catalog. You can also combine ingredients and adjust the weight of each ingredient. So which one you want to have the most impact on your algorithm? Personalization then weights those items according to your customer's behaviors and affinities. We have many options of ingredients and you can visit our help article to deep dive in what each ingredient does. For this demo, we'll be selecting any eligible item. Any eligible item lets us recommend any item that can be used for a recipe. Recipes generate one-on-one -on -one recommendations focused on each user. Exclusions let you include or exclude different types of products or content in your recipe. For example, you can exclude specific products from your catalog, in your cart, or previous recommendations from the last few days. So when configuring exclusions, it's important to know that creating an exclusion for any items, articles, blogs, products, and so on, includes all other items that are not explicitly excluded. Creating an inclusion for any items, articles, blogs, products, and so on, excludes all other items that are not explicitly included. Boosters further refine the algorithm by letting you increase the likelihood of a certain product or content type displaying based on the customer affinity score to boost items matching that affinity in the recommendations it presents. The affinity score takes into account users' interactions with your site, such as item views, items added to the cart, and items purchased. We have three parameters for boosters. Threshold is how much activity or affinity a user needs for the booster to have any impact. When the threshold is met, then the weight is how much impact it will have. Weight, how much the booster will impact. Look back, the number of days to look back at a customer's history for the booster. Variations work in tandem with exclusions. For example, you can restrict the number of products shown from a certain category. Once your recipe is ready, you need to train it. Training a recipe pulls data from the entire data set of your website for all users. So depending on the complexity and quantity of information in the data set, it can take up to 24 hours to fully train. However, once the recipe is fully trained, you can make adjustments to any exclusions, boosters, or variations without having to retrain the recipe. You might not get the recipe right on your first attempt, and that's okay. The simulation tool lets you make sure that everything is correct before launching Einstein recommendations. Visitors receive content based on their preferences. Boosters have been applied correctly. Customers you're engaging with can receive what seems like truly one-on-one -on -one content that translates into a better click-through rate. 
Which brings us to a great tip. While testing, try making small adjustments, followed by a re-simulation. By doing so, you'll be able to better understand factors that might have the greatest impact on the recipe itself. You can use recipes in your web campaigns for product content recommendations, but also in open time email campaigns. Please check our campaign video. Here are some troubleshooting tips for Einstein recipes. Start by examining the recipe's construction. Some key things to check are what ingredients are included in the recipe. If you add an ingredient that requires an on-page anchor item, such as the Kobai ingredient, you must enter a sample item name or ID as the anchor item. Is the anchor item representing recommendations? If you create the recipe with an ingredient that requires an anchor item, the recipe training could lack enough data for that anchor item. Is there an exclusion in the recipe? Exclusions always override inclusions, so if there's a conflict, the exclusion always wins. Check for conflicting exclusions and inclusions that prevent the recipe from suggesting recommendations. Is the expected item promotable? Certain items don't appear as recommendations unless they meet all necessary criteria. For example, if there's a published date, the current date must be after it. If there's an expiration date, the current date must be before it. For more information, check out help.salesforce.com or visit us on the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com. Thanks for watching.